Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Wednesday, August 14th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Akron game in 17 days. Yes, I think you're probably like me and getting a little bit excited as you see how small that number is getting every day. The game against Michigan in 108 days. That's getting smaller, too. Not quite as small, quite as quickly, but that's all right. We will get there all in due, all in due time. We're actually today going to be talking about something that happens after the Michigan game this season. That is a college football playoff. We've done a couple of these shows where we're taking sort of early season projections, magazine predict predictions, that kind of stuff, and just sort of playing out what the college football field, playoff field might look like this fall based on some of those. And yeah, I mean, magazines obviously have varying degrees of accuracy. Who knows more about college football, though, than sports media? I would submit no one. I'm sure Tony Gerdeman agrees with me. Tony, the new AP Top 25 is out. I don't know why they bother playing the season. We and our brethren in the sports media obviously know exactly what's going to happen. The only reason we're ever wrong is just because we don't want to spoil the surprise. But, you know, should are we OK to do a show with this or are we giving too much away? Well, you know what? I will say uh, they don't just give these votes out to anybody. So we can I think it's fair to share that information with with the world. Uh, it's for the good of all mankind. It is a uh, impart knowledge upon others who are much, 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 much less knowledgeable about the subject. I think uh, she's doing our part, and uh, you're welcome. If Mother Teresa had a college football podcast, it would definitely be this one. All right, so we're going to once again remind you just of the format of the college football playoff, because again, it's very, very different than it has been in previous years. First round of games happening on campus, one happening on the evening of Friday, December 20th. And then three games on Saturday, December 21st, one in the early afternoon time slot, one in the late afternoon, and one in the evening. If you take the college football top 25 from the Associated Press and map that onto what this year's college football field would look like and just assume, hey, these guys are going to get it all right because they're, they're professionals, absolutely, absolutely they will. First round games, number 12, Boise State at number five, Oregon, number nine, Notre Dame at number eight, Ole Miss. Number 11, Michigan at number six, Texas, and number 10, Penn State at number seven, Alabama. And I think the first thing, other than, you know, every time I look at these, I'm like, wow, these are awesome games. Other than that, I think my big takeaway on this is Boise State and Oregon played in, the, are set to play in the regular season. Michigan and Texas are set to play in the regular season. It sure feels like it would be easy to just, you know, you slide someone one direction or another, and all of a sudden, hey, number 11, Michigan is playing. Uh, they're number 10, actually, and number 10, Penn State, is now number 11. And then you avoid the, uh, avoid the rematch of a regular season game. And also, Tony, we'll get, to, we'll get to who number 11 Michigan could play in the second round if they suddenly became number 10. But you know, it just feels like they, the committee might be willing to just sort of just like put a little finger on the scale to slide things around just a little bit. Yeah, I think they, they should. And that would create for a more intriguing product. I just wonder if you can do that with the group of five team. And I know we're not just talking about that. We're talking about maybe the, the nine, 10, 11, something like that. But if there is an argument for the 12 seed to move up and create uh, just a better matchup or something we haven't seen, I, I, I don't, I wonder if that's just not even a place they can go where it relates to the group of five. And so it is whoever that is just is just bound to that 12 seed at that five seed. So then it becomes, yeah, can can Michigan move around or, or something in that 11 seed? But I do think um, if with this one, Boise State is 12, Oregon five. Can they avoid that? You know, that's a week two matchup. Is it fair for Boise State to have to go to Oregon twice in the same year? Like um, that, that seems like welcome to the playoffs. Now you've got to go play out in stadium twice. Congratulations. You, they've been clamoring for uh, inclusion forever uh, for almost 20 years now, and, and they've got it. And it's like they're going to make them smoke the whole pack of playoffs. Yeah. Oh, yo, you want to you want to play with the big boys, do you? All right. Well, good luck with that. Yeah, that, you know, if Boise State is going to move off of or whoever the group of five team is, like if it's Boise State, Boise State, if they win at Oregon, and they go 12 and 0 in the regular season. I think they would have a very good case to be the number nine team in the country or something like that. You know, regardless of what the rest of their schedule looks like. Functionally, is that ever going to happen? Well, we did see Cincinnati make the playoff once in the four team format. So I guess you can never say never, but 
it, it will certainly be interesting to see how that all uh, how that all potentially shakes out. But let's move on now to the quarterfinals. December 31st in the evening, New Year's Eve, the Fiesta Bowl, and then the rest of the quarterfinals kick off with the Peach Bowl early afternoon on January 1st, then the Rose Bowl in the late afternoon, the Sugar Bowl in the evening. Just as a reminder, I spoke to the college football playoff executive director during Big Ten Media Days and just wanted to get some clarification on this. The bowl that you are the conference champions go to, the top four seeds that get the buys are all conference champions. The bowls that those teams go to are going to be based on the existing contracts with the leagues and the bowls. So the Big Ten, Big Ten champion has historically gone to the Rose Bowl. The Big Ten champion, assuming they were one of the top four teams in the playoff, which they are almost certainly going to be, they would go to the Rose Bowl for the quarterfinal. So that's true of the Georgia Bulldogs would probably go to the Peach Bowl or to the uh, to the Sugar Bowl, because that is where the SEC has their ties and then kind of go down the line from there. So the uh, projection here would be the New Year's Eve game would be the winner of Boise State and Oregon playing against Utah in the Fiesta Bowl. The winner of Notre Dame and Ole Miss playing against Georgia in the Sugar Bowl. The winner of Michigan, Texas playing against Florida State in the Peach Bowl. And the winner of Penn State and Alabama playing against Ohio State in the Rose Bowl. Back to back years of Alabama in the Rose Bowl feels like maybe the weirdest thing in a year full of weird things in college football. But, you know, again, you slide one team one direction on the, uh, you know, one spot on the line, and boy, you could have an Ohio State Michigan Rose Bowl. And uh, boy, oh boy, would that be fun. Yeah, I don't know how you pass that up. And again, we're not yelling at the committee here. This is just AP projections of the of the ballot of the AP vote and just placing them. But I I could not be uh, in that committee room and not be like, hey, you guys see what I'm seeing, right? We, if we just make Michigan ten and Penn State eleven, we can have Ohio State, Michigan, in the Rose Bowl. And me, as I always say, when that happens, home jerseys for both teams. But like this is. Uh, once in a lifetime, once in, uh, I don't know, many lifetimes, an opportunity to have Ohio State, Michigan uh, in the playoffs against each other in the Rose Bowl to go to the semifinals. The The Rose Bowl is always like huge. Ohio State, Michigan is always huge. Put them together. And uh, it's if you don't do this, somebody needs to be fired, frankly. Like if you don't move teams around, like we're talking. One spot, uh, two teams. Like if if you don't do that, and we know that the committee can justify any move they make because they do it every single week, and they contradict themselves most weeks. So this would not be anything they could do. How unless you've got a situation where Penn State beats Michigan, although I don't believe they play, so um, it's not even. Uh, so in this situation, again, not quite likely to happen, but. You wouldn't have to go head to head. Now there could be some in- instances where they do have to go head to head. Good news is that doesn't always matter if they don't want it to matter. So there is that. There is that. We we have always hated it when the committee kind of d- makes it up as it goes along. I would be completely okay <laughs> with making it up as it goes along. In this case, this feels like Tony. Uh, I'm just going to make this up right now off the top of my head. Uh, never, never words never spoken before in the history of the world. If the playoff committee has a chance to put Ohio State and Michigan together in the Rose Bowl in the quarterfinal and they don't do it, they are going to regret it. Maybe not today, Tony, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of their lives. It's a good line. Write that down. Surprised no one's used that one before. All right. So let's move on to the semifinals. And now we're kind of in the, well, it's going to be one of these 17 different teams. Uh, But January 9th, January 10th, Orange Bowl and Cotton Bowl, one one night, one the next night. The the uh, way this would lay out for the, uh, according to the AP poll, would be Georgia in the Orange Bowl playing probably the Oregon-Utah winner. So probably Georgia-Oregon if you're kind of holding true to where the uh, where the rankings would have teams. And then Ohio State-Texas in the Cotton Bowl. You know, this is something we've talked about before. This is one of the advantages of doing these things for these pro- sort of projection things where you could see an Ohio State team being the second team in the country and then having to play Texas in Texas, and then potentially having to play Georgia in Georgia in the national championship game. 
I asked the college football playoff executive director about that as well. He said the number one team will get some consideration there where if, you know, Ohio State and Texas are on the same side of the bracket and Ohio State is number one, they might kick Ohio State over to the Orange Bowl, even if that's not, you know, geographically the closest for, you know, you know, that th- it would make more sense geographically to have Georgia there. Maybe the number one team will get some consideration in that in that case. If you're the number two team, like, yeah, sorry about your luck. That's, you know, nothing, nothing you can do about it. So that number one seed is potentially important in terms of keeping a play Texas and Texas and Georgia and Georgia situation from happening. And you can't, nothing you can do about where the national championship game is, but you could have that impact in the semifinal. What I think is interesting to me is how every time people are projecting this sort of stuff out, it's always Ohio State, Georgia. Oregon, Texas in the final four. Which one of those is not getting there? Because we know whenever it's whenever it's too mm-hmm. easy, it never happens that way. So who who is not getting there? Who is getting upset before the semifinals? In, in the in this instance, th- this one again shows us that being that five seed is not all that bad because you get you get the the group of five. And then you get the what is essentially the worst conference champ, which could be an you know a nine and four team theoretically, uh, but then you eventually have to meet up against the the one seed. But still, like that that, fi- that five seed is not a bad road. Um, I I guess uh, I guess I'll go Texas not making it because it's. History has shown us it's easier to not have faith in Texas and be rewarded for it. Although you could say the same thing about Oregon, but right now um, I'm going to go with Texas. Uh, I do have one question for you, though, Tom. The number one seed getting uh, favorability, what happens if there is no number one seed? Does does that favor then go to the highest ranked team, or is it only the, the number one seed that gets consideration? Well, the highest, the highest ranked team, the number, I mean, there has to be a number. Well, this is, this is, sorry, let's be clear. This is on selection Sunday when they're laying things out. They will have that, they will have that laid out. Uh, that, you know, it's not going to be that you, you know, you, you finish your game on New Year's Day and then you find out which bowl game you're going to. And they, they will have it laid out. So, you know, if Ohio State and Texas are on the same side of the bracket, that's something the committee could take into account in terms of if Ohio State's the number one seed. So I probably did not explain that completely or correctly. So there you go. So that is that is not something that is going to get changed after New Year's Day or will depend on they would just say, hey, if Texas on this side, or, you know, if Miami is one of the uh, is one of the is if Miami is the four seed, and Georgia's the one seed, they probably they would probably ship Georgia out to the Cotton Bowl and have them play Miami in the Cotton Bowl rather than having them play Miami in the Orange Bowl, which would be functionally a home game for Miami. Which I guess if Miami's good, they would probably have fans there. I mean, a normal Miami home game, the crowd's obviously not a factor. So yeah, well, but yeah, that's that's how it was explained to me. It doesn't sound like that's absolutely going to happen, but it is something that you know the committee can take into consideration that in terms of not putting the number one seed in a disadvantageous spot in the semifinal. So hopefully that explains it. As far as the national championship game goes, January twentieth. 2025, nothing else going on in America that day, Tony. The nation's eyes purely turn to the national championship game in Atlanta, Georgia, in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. You know, if you're going to follow the AP polls lead, and why wouldn't you? Number one, Georgia. Number two, Ohio State matching up in the Georgia Dome. It, not the Georgia Dome. That that has not happened. Uh, that, has, that has been gone for a while. Uh, Jamal Anderson not walking through that door. Uh, it, is, it is in uh, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium a place where we have seen Georgia and Ohio State play an absolutely dynamite game in the past. Feels like, you know, I mean, there's a long way to go between here and January 20th, but boy, it feels like you could be setting up for another absolute classic of a national championship game. Yeah, 100%. And and, and I'll keep saying this, whoever wins this is going to win the most difficult national championship in college football history. It's the most difficult road that anybody's going to go through. And it's going to be the first time doing it and uh, trying to figure out how you're going to be learning as you go along. And uh, I just remember Urban Meyer after 2014 said, we could never play it. We couldn't have played another game after this one and things like that. And like, well, let's see. 
and then they're going to have to, and then, then another one. And so the, the road is the most treacherous in college football history. But anytime I look at these brackets and you just look at them, it's, it's hard not to get excited about it. And season is now a little over two weeks away. And it's just, um, you, you see the schools up there, you see what could be. And, and the fact that it's here now, like there's going to be, uh, a playoff game at Penn State or, you know, Ohio Stadium or whatever. And it's going to be, you know, shoot like Alabama at Penn State or Penn State at Alabama. The, the, the things that we're going to be able to see that we've never seen before. And I think that's awesome for college football. Yeah, definitely. Definitely awesome for college football. A lot of those things. Yeah. And we may find out a couple of years from now, like, hey, those first round games don't matter at all. Those teams all get killed in the summer in the quarterfinals or whatever. But you know, right now it is all new. It is all exciting. All stuff we have not seen before. Cannot wait. Mentioned the, the season, Ohio State season, two weeks away, a little over two weeks away. Week zero, that first Saturday of the season, 10 days away. College football almost here. The longest off season in major North American sports, finally almost over. And now headed for what is going to be the longest season in college football history. Never gone this far, this deep into January before. And uh, going to start nice and early as well, August 24th, week zero, August 31st, week one. Ohio State will be hosting Akron at 3 o'clock, 3.30 p.m. on ESP on CBS. No, one, not on ESPN anymore. Sorry, that was just reflective. 3.30, CBS, Ohio State, Akron, 17 days, cannot wait. And there's going to be a lot of games more exciting than that even after uh, later on in the season. So I have a lot, a lot of that to look forward to. to. Try not to focus entirely on the college football playoff. We keep doing these shows about this, and you know, all season I will end up reminding you, like, don't worry about the playoff. Just enjoy the season. The season goes so fast. You got to enjoy the season for the season. We will probably stop doing these at some point, but just with it being a new season, a new format, I want to just kind of run through it and let you know sort of what this could look like in December when the season is finally hitting its home stretch. So between now and then, you got a lot of time to time to kill. You got a lot of days to fill. Great place to do that would be at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That's where Tony, Kevin, and I cover the team. Mark covers recruiting. Got our whole team of X's and O's gurus there to make us make you a smarter football fan. And as at all at BuckeyeHuddle.com, as well as our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash buckeyehuddle. Lots of content there. We'll have more interviews for you coming up a little later on in the week. Plenty more coverage, inside access, and much, much more. All at buckeyehuddle.com and youtube.com slash buckeyehuddle. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.